that's just Matthew. Mark chapter 1, follow me. Mark chapter 2, follow me. Mark chapter 8, follow me. Mark chapter 10, follow me. Luke chapter 5, follow me. Luke chapter 9, follow me. Luke chapter 18, follow me. John chapter 1, follow me. John chapter 12, follow me. John chapter 21, the final command in the four gospel books is Jesus turning to Peter and saying, if I wish that he, John, he remain here till I return, what is that to you, Peter? You follow me. Through repetition and diversity of stories of which we look back and wonder at their glory, Christ repeated the same command to drive the point home. Follow me. And it cost these people much to follow. In my story, Dan picked up right where Thomas left off because going on from there, Jesus saw two other brothers. Dan was attending the local assembly Dan invited me to the Bible study. He said, we have a small group. Listen, uh, uh, you should just come and listen and learn and ask anything you want. Well, I didn't want to participate by actually speaking or participating, mentioning anything. The reason was I was afraid if I went to the Bible study, I might have to admit that it's superior somehow. Christianity somehow is because God only answers prayer in Jesus' name. And no Muslim wants to admit that. So I didn't want to go. But I say, I'll do this. I'll go because I'm curious why God only answered prayer in Jesus' name. I'm curious. I want to know. But I won't ask because I don't want to admit that God only answers prayer in Jesus' name. That's a tough game the fish wants to play. The fish wants to come and have their curiosity and question answered, but the fish doesn't want to open his mouth to ask it because he doesn't want to admit it. I thank God these words follow me and this promise and I will make you fishers of men that means you just have to follow Christ you have to simply do the evangelism do the serving Christ will do the rest even if the fish has strange rules for the game I came to the Bible study and I didn't say a word and I would come week after week wondering why does God only answer prayer in Jesus name and I wouldn't say a word And it began to make the Christians nervous because beyond hello, back to them, I wouldn't say much. And over time, they got even more nervous because I was jealous of the Christians and how they had access to prayers, answered prayers and miracles. So if you were looking at me, I may have appeared unfriendly. Here, think like an FBI profiler for a moment. Single male Muslim from the East Coast, not very friendly, doesn't seem to want to participate and learn in the Bible study, but keeps coming. What in the world is he doing here? He's making his hit list. And the Christians became a little more nervous when they found out that Dan, who brings this Muslim boy Ali to this Bible study, Dan is teaching him now on the weekends, teaching Ali how to hunt and shoot guns. Dan, you're doing it wrong. You're not supposed to be running Camp Al-Qaeda. Shut it down, Dan. You're training the terrorists how to kill us. Why was I going back week after week? Because week after week, though I had questions I wouldn't ask, God was giving the answers that he knew I needed to hear. Someone in the Bible study would ask a question, and I would realize I have that question. Silently, I would realize that. And someone else would give an answer, and I would, sit, I would think, that was an incredible answer. What did he say? He gave that answer, and he said, Romans something. And someone else would ask another question, and I would think, I have that question. And someone else would give an answer. Well, you know, it says in John. And I would hear the answer. And it would cut me to the heart, sharp as a double-edged sword. And I would think that was was an answer of answers. But I wouldn't say anything because fish don't encourage fishermen. Week after week, this was happening. And I began to think as a Muslim, how do they know what I'm thinking? I'm not talking. I'm not asking anything. How do they know? 
Dan must be telling him what I'm thinking. Never mind. How does Dan know what you're thinking, fish? Right? This makes no sense. But I, I was like, how do they know? They must have got into my mind somehow. Well, I know. Okay, here's my theory. I get there last because I'm last to get off of work. Dan knows my shift, so he's telling them that Muslim, you know he comes later than the rest of you, so we got to hurry up and get the ball rolling. Listen, here is the first question that's on his mind. You ask this question, sir. And here is the first answer you must give from Romans, dear sister. The answer from Ephesians, dear brother. And the second question here, dear sister, you have to ask this. He's thinking it. And here's the answer to the third and fourth question. Everybody got their questions? Got their answers? Shh, here comes the Muslim boy. Shh, ready, go. This was my conspiracy theory. It was the only way I could explain this. After my salvation, months after this, I was still believing in this conspiracy theory that they somehow knew what I was thinking and were writing down questions and answers. I confronted Dan about it. I said, I'm one of you now. You can admit what you were doing in that Bible study. He said, what are you talking about? I told him my conspiracy theory. He laughed in my face. He said, Ali, we didn't know what you were thinking, but what you have described here, brother, is what we Christians call the leading of the Holy Spirit. What do these words mean? Follow me. What do they mean but that? Someone's going to lead. Even if the fish doesn't want to play, doesn't want to talk, doesn't want to ask, someone's going to lead. Was Jesus in the Bible study? Oh, yes, he was. Where any two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And they were opening the word that became flesh, the Bible. They were opening the written incarnation of Jesus Christ. He was in the midst of them. Eventually, I had every question I had answered without so much as opening my mouth and asking a question. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Eventually, just like it says Jesus going on from there, saw two other brothers, two other fishermen, two other brothers, and he calls them. Even going on from that Bible study, I swam away from that eventually. Because I had every question answered. You know, it was a funny thing. They, the, the last thing they were doing before I left was they, they decided, uh, what do we want to study next? And someone said, apologetics. Someone else said, apologetics. Another one, apologetics. They all wanted to study apologetics. And I said, well, this is interesting. I said to myself, I'm coming back next week because I didn't know there is a study behind how to apologize. I came next week. I heard no apology. I heard a defense for the gospel. They looked at apologetics through archaeology. They looked at apologetics through biology. They looked at apologetics through astronomy. That was one of my hobbies. They looked at apologetics from science, from philosophy. They looked at presuppositional apologetics, creational apologetics. And before their apologetics Bible study was complete, I was fried fish. I remember the night I was sitting there as they were discussing these things. I had come for several weeks now and heard a defense of all these things. The most incredible thing to me and all of them was that unbelieving academics in the field of archaeology trust one blueprint for finding a lost city. It's called the Bible. And they don't even believe in it, but they trust it to find any lost city in antiquity. I remember that floored me. They don't believe in the book, but it's so true. They know to go to it to find these lost cities. That floored me. I remember uh, all these evidences were nails in the coffin of my doubt. And I remember sitting there that night thinking, this is the truth. There's no other way. And now I have a serious problem. This is in the midst of your Bible study. I just had my head down thinking these thoughts. You never know what fish are thinking. I remember thinking, this is the truth. Now that I know it, then this is the only way. Is this Jesus? But I'm not ready for that. But now I know. And if I go on living as a Muslim or anything else, by default, I'll be living a lie. 
But this is the only truth. I'm not ready for this. And without saying a word, I swam away from them too. I swam away from all of them. At work, I would try to avoid Dan. He would write me on the workplace little messenger. He'd say, where are you? The Christians are wondering where you've been. Will you, has anybody offended you? You won't come back. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I was afraid I might get saved. They changed the seating arrangement at work. They seated me next to Kevin Dalkey. I don't really know him well, but he was a born-again Christian. Who's in charge of the seating arrangement? The same guy who says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. After Thomas, Dan preached. After Dan, Kevin preached. After Kevin, Dan had gone and found a friend of his, David. David came and preached. Fishermen sometimes call to one another, help me catch this fish. And other people were coming out of the woodwork. And I began to think to myself, I did not know that the entire state of Nebraska is born again Christian. That's what I began to conclude. It, it couldn't be further from the truth. But this is what happens when Jesus goes on from there and sees two other brothers and says to them, follow me. But they have to do their part. See, it says, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Many Americans have it in their dreams to buy a boat. Would you leave a boat to follow Christ? Eventually, I just decided to avoid people altogether in Nebraska. October 23rd, 2010 rolled around. I would go to work, I'd come home, and I'd given up on Islam. I would indulge myself in sin. What's the point? I've now learned Christianity is the truth. And like Solomon, who indulged himself, he said, it's all vanity of vanities. Meaningless is chasing the wind. October 23rd, 2010 rolled around about two and a half years from my running from, and swimming away from that fisherman, Thomas, whom I'd met two and a half years earlier. And on October 2010, I decided I'm just going to watch some Netflix. That's safe. No fishermen. I looked through my Netflix. Up toward the top, suggested for Ali, it said, the Gospel of John. I looked at that thing. I said, look at that. Netflix's rating system says, I'm going to love this film. Well, let me try it. If it's no good, I'll just turn it off. I hit play. Is it any good? In the beginning was the word. <gasps> I was glued to that television. It was dark in that bedroom. It was only me in that bedroom, sitting in the darkness. The only light was the television, and it was the Gospel of John video Bible. The people who sat in darkness. I've seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach. The world has never been the same since. I watched him preach in that Gospel of John. I remember his words. No one ever spake like this man, said the guards. Why did you not arrest him? No one ever spake like this man. I remember when they took him and beat him, I was crushed. What are they doing to this man? He's done nothing wrong. Just like the thoughts of the thief on the cross, we indeed justly receive the due reward of our sins, but this man has done nothing wrong. You see, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, even in the absence of fishermen that night, Suggested for all you the gospel of John, the light in the darkness of that bedroom, the words of Christ beckoning me, calling me to repentance by faith, and the beatings of Christ convicting me of my sin, convicting me of righteousness, for he has ascended to the Father. We see him no more, convicting me of judgment, 
for the ruler of this world is judged already. I fell on my knees that night. Pausing that film when they were beating Christ, I couldn't continue to watch. I was weeping so hard under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Who does the pre-salvation ministry? Doesn't live inside sinners, but whispers into their ear by means we do not understand. You're a sinner, and you must repent. You must be born again. Let our voices preach the word. The Holy Spirit's doing his part. And that night, on my knees, I wept that proud Muslim Persian, Iranian, New Yorker, Wall Street man was turned into a little child weeping over his sin. For you become, must become like one of these to enter the kingdom of heaven as a child. I went to Romans 3. I was convicted of my sin. Dan had told me, go to Romans 3. Dan had told me, he'd written it down for me, go to Romans 10 and do not play with God, Ali. Dan had said to me, he'd written it to me. What does it say in Romans 10? I wrestled with these words that night on my knees, tears falling in that Bible. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I wrestled with God that night. My mouth did not want to confess Christ is Lord. I remember saying to myself, I'm a Muslim. This is the one thing I'm not supposed to do is say Christ is Lord. But then the most beautiful of thoughts occurred as Jesus was making of his fishermen a fisher of men. A thought occurred to me that I've always been where I've always been. I've always been here, not stepping on these words, on this foundation, on this ground. I've always been here on the ground of Islam. I don't know what it's like to stand there. And a thought occurred to me, what if it's different than what I know? I want to find out. Christ is Lord came out of my lips and I believed in my heart that God has raised him from the dead for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation just like the thief on the cross what did he say Lord he confessed Christ was Lord Lord and he believed that Christ was going to be raised from the dead. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He did the same thing on the cross. And so does every man or woman who is saved, believing in their heart, professing with their mouth. I got saved that night. No fisherman was present except the master fisherman himself through his Holy Spirit. The Christians would ask me in the days that followed, how did you get saved finally? They were curious. Who was it? What was his method of evangelism? What was the brand of the gospel tract? What was this? What was that? And my reply as a babe in Christ was, Netflix. <laughs> the Christians would be puzzled at first. But I'm sure in their meditations before the Lord, everyone saw the light. Oh, right. God took the glory for himself. When I swam into deep, dark waters where no fisherman could reach in my bedroom alone, the arm of the Lord reached down into the dark, deep waters. But the arm of the Lord is not shortened such that it cannot save. And he did reach down with a net. He even has a sense of humor. Netflix. I have to close up. I'm over time, and please forgive me. I have scriptures here about sacrifices to follow. And I don't have time to go over them. I have to close, but I'll tell you this. Thomas risked his career to follow Christ and preach Christ to me at the workplace. That night I got saved. I texted him. I said, Thomas, I believed on Jesus Christ.
Thomas texted me, he said, Ali, it's been a difficult year for me, 2010. Maybe my most difficult year yet. But with news of your salvation, God has made my year. He was a financial rock star at the company when he worked for the company. He was making money hand over foot. When he had left, he'd entered a season of difficulty. Paul says, until this hour, we hunger, we thirst. We are poorly clothed. He also says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. There will be seasons of difficulty, but there are seasons. Paul would also say, I've learned to abound in plenty. I've learned to suffer. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. God made Thomas his ear. And the last thing I'll say is, Dan, Abraham left his household, his father's house, his country. The bride of Isaac had to leave everything she knew. These men through the Gospels had to leave what they knew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they had to leave something to follow Christ. Do you know what Dan left to follow Christ? He was the first one I told that night I got saved. He was the first one to receive the good news. And I, don't, I do not know, God knows, but it could perhaps be the case that Dan left the greatest. Dan had a possible career in the NFL. He, was, he had a chance to go play college football, tall, strong, every reason that he could one day be the next Tim Tebow. He got on his knees one night. And God simply told him, no. So he did the only thing he could. He followed Christ. And God made him Dan, a fisher of men. I got saved. I said, Dan, what do I do next? He said, go to church. I said, but I got saved. I don't need to go to church. He said, you're a baby, and people want to hold you. Come to church. I went to church. They planted. They watered. God faithfully continues to give the increase. Heavenly Father, we thank you. It's been 2,000 years. We know that that text in that portion ends in glorious things, that his fame goes throughout all Judea. His fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon-possessed and epileptics. And Lord, your scripture says he healed them. Then it says great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. And Father, we know we're beyond the Jordan today here in Alabama, but the promise of your son has not slackened the slightest. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So Lord, we just pray that we would leave our fish nets already in whatever way we have not that you have asked of us. Forgive us this trespass. In Jesus' name, amen.